Hello everyone, welcome to Learn Wireless Technology. In this tutorial, we will discuss about the functions and protocols of NAS layer. NAS layer or the non-access stratum layer is the layer 3 of the LT protocol stack. It is the topmost protocol layer in the LT control plane stack that deals with the communication between UE and MME. Basically, non-access stratum is a set of protocols that are used to convey non-radio signaling between UE and MME for LT network access. Non-radio signaling means the signaling information that are transferred between UE and network without transmitting them directly over the radio interface. So basically, these signaling messages originate from the NAS layer and are encapsulated into the RRC messages that are transferred between UE and E node B, which are transmitted over the radio air interface. Now, as seen in this figure, this is the LT control plane protocol stack diagram. Here, as you can see, the NAS layer of UE communicates with the NAS layer of MME. Now, there is no direct air interface connection between UE and MME. So, the communication between UE and MME happens via E node B. The NAS signaling messages originating at UE side are encapsulated in the RRC message generated at the RRC layer and transmitted to E node B over the air interface in the uplink direction. The E node B does not interpret or decode the received NAS messages and transfer the NAS messages directly to MME via S1 AP protocol. In the similar way, the NAS messages are transferred from MME to UE in the downlink direction. Now, there are various functions offered by the NAS layer and these functions can be grouped into two major categories which are EPS Mobility Management that is EMM and EPS Session Management that is ESM. The EMM functions are involved with procedures such as user registration, authentication, idle mode mobility, NAS security procedures, etc and ESM functions are involved with EPS bearer management between UE and EPC. Let's discuss these categories of NAS functions in more detail. EPS mobility management protocol or EMM protocol refers to procedures related to EUTRAN access, authentication and security. Now the EMM standard procedures defined by 3GPP are distinguished as registration related, security related, and EMM connection related procedures. The registration related procedures are specifically UE initiated procedures such as attach and detach mechanisms with EPC. It also includes normal or periodic tracking area update which is used to update the location of a UE within the network. Tracking area update is equivalent to location area update and routing area update that happens in WCDMA and GSM. Tracking area is an area that contains multiple cells or E node Bs that are managed by an MME. UE initiates a tracking area update when it moves to a new tracking area which is known as normal tracking area update procedure. And when a UE is in idle state, it performs periodic tracking area update when the periodic update timer expires. Now there's a provision for a UE to maintain a list of tracking areas known as tracking area list. This list helps the UE to avoid triggering a tracking area update when it moves to a new tracking area which is already available in its tracking area list. The provisioning of tracking area list helps to avoid large amount of signaling transactions in case when large number of UEs enter a new tracking area at a time. Next is the security related procedures. These are mostly network initiated procedures such as UE identity relocation, authentication, security mode control, UE identification and EMM information. EMM connection related procedures are used to support the connection of the UE with the network. The procedures are also referred as EPS connection management or ECM. It includes procedures such as service request which is initiated by the UE to establish a NAS signaling connection with the network. Paging is initiated by the network for the UEs which are in idle state 
to indicate them that there is an incoming data and it needs to wake up to initiate a connection request with the network to receive the incoming data. The procedures also include transport of NAS messages such as SMS or other application data such as LCS. Now there are different EMM states defined for the NAS layer at UE and MME. These states determine whether a UE is reachable or not and whether a UE can receive services. The two EMM states defined are EMM deregistered and EMM registered. So the UE's EMM state depends on whether the UE is registered with EPC, which is the core network of LTE. A UE is in EMM deregistered state when it is first powered on. The location of the UE is not known to the MME for paging and there is also no default EPS bearer established with the network while in EMM deregistered state. UE also does not have any serving gateway allocated and no IP address is assigned. Hence UE attempts to move to EMM registered state by performing attach procedure. UE finds a suitable PLMN and selects a suitable cell to register. After completing the attach procedure, UE registers with the network which enables transferring of signaling messages. UE is allocated a serving gateway and an IP address is assigned to it. UE establishes a default bearer with the network for transferring application data. After attaching to the network, the UE's location will be known to the MME. During the attach procedure, when UE establishes a default bearer, it has an active PDN connection which keeps the UE in EMM registered state. When the default bearer is deactivated or the PDN connection is disconnected, the UE moves back to EMM deregistered state. UE can also transit to EMM deregistered state when it performs detach procedure or when it moves to an out of coverage area or when the tracking area update request is rejected by the network for some reason. So as we are discussing about EMM states, when UE is in EMM registered state, the 3GPP also defines EPS connection management states or ECM states in LT NAS layer. These ECM states are ECM idle and ECM connected state. In some specifications, these are also referred as EMM idle and EMM connected states. So when UE is in ECM idle state, it does not have a NAS signaling connection with the MME. However, the location of the UE is known to MME at tracking area level. UE performs cell selection, cell reselection and tracking area update when in ECM idle state. Basically, there is no data exchange between the UE and network in this state as it has no RRC connection and EMM signaling connection. UE is in kind of standby mode. Now the procedures performed while UE is in ECM idle state are Tracking area update triggered by mobility or by periodic timer. While UE is in mobility and if it detects that it has entered a new tracking area whose identity is not listed in the tracking area list, then the UE performs a normal tracking area update. And periodic tracking area update is performed when the timer T3412 expires. The information about T3412 timer is provided by the network in attach accept message. Then tracking area update is triggered for MME load balancing. Here the UE signaling connection is relocated to a different MME. And UE performs service request procedure in ECM idle state when UE has to send uplink user plane data or when UE gets paged indicating an incoming data. The UE enters ECM connected state after it establishes NAS signaling connection with the network. So basically, UE entering ECM connected state corresponds to the establishment of an RRC connection between UE and E node B when viewed from UE's perspective, while from MME's perspective, it corresponds to the establishment of S1 connection between E node B and MME. So the procedures that triggers the transition from ECM idle state to ECM connected state are attach request, tracking area update request, service request, etc. And these procedures requires the UE to be in RRC connected mode. 
There will be a continuous exchange of data in uplink and downlink direction since UV is in active state. In ECM connected state, UV's location is known at E node B level and UV performs connected mode handovers which is controlled by the E node B. UV also performs tracking area update while in connected mode when it moves to a cell belonging to a new tracking area. When the signaling connections are released, UV transits from ECM connected to ECM idle state. Now let's discuss the next category of NAS layer functions and protocols which is the EPS session management or ESM. The ESM protocol supports the establishment and handling of user data in the non-access datum. Now there are two major terms involved with the session management between UE and network. These are PDN connection and EPS bearer. The ESM procedures are involved with the EPS bearer management between UE and EPC. During the attached procedure, a PDN connection is established between UE and PDN gateway and a default bearer is created for data transfer. So a PDN connection is composed of a default bearer and there can be multiple default bearers established based on the service requested by UE. The PDN connection as you know is the IP connectivity between UE and network where UE is allocated an IP address and quality of service that is QoS for the particular active data session. If a particular service such as live video streaming, video call or Volti call requires specific handling in terms of quality of service, then dedicated bearers can be established. Now a PDN connection is established using an APN that is access point name and all the EPS bearers share the same IP address and same APN within the PDN connection. As you know, there can be multiple simultaneous PDN connections for a UV. That is, a UV can have a PDN connection to the internet using the default bearer established during attach process and it can have a simultaneous PDN connection to the IMS network for making Volti calls which uses the additional dedicated bearers. Now the ESM standard procedures include various procedures which can be either network initiated or UV initiated. The network initiated procedures are the ones carried from EPC to UV direction which are activation, deactivation and modification of default and dedicated EPS bearer context. The UV initiated procedures are the ones carried from UV to EPC direction which are PDN connectivity requests and PDN disconnection requests made by the UV, bearer resource allocation, modification and release requested by the UV. Now the ESM protocol can also have two transition states, ESM inactive and ESM active state. When an EPS bearer context is set up, UV transits from ESM inactive to ESM active state and when the EPS bearer context is released, UV transits from ESM active to ESM inactive state. One thing to note here is that the ESM connection or EPS bearer can be active even when the RRC connections are inactive, unlike the EMM connection which is active only when an RRC connection is active. This is due to the always on IP connectivity feature offered in LTE. So that was all about the NAS layer protocols and its different states along with different NAS layer procedures. I hope you understood it all. Thanks for watching.